Okay, so uh, this is a new video, um, and it's a trading idea and trading strategy using uh, dispersion trading on the uh, Dow and the Dow components. Um, so I sent this out a long time ago, and I'm just now getting around to uh, making a video about it. Um, so if we're assuming a uh, one a decelerating global and domestic economy, uh, two a relatively uh, slight increase in global and domestic realized volatility, then I would recommend looking into uh, two, uh, two options on dispersion trading. Uh, if volatility is expected to send correlations to one, uh, then you should short uh, uh, you should be short dispersion trade. But if you think central bank stimulus and balance sheet expansion uh, will continue to dampen realized volatility, you may want to go long dispersion. Uh, trading equity correlations uh, may continue to be slightly less correlated in a low volatility environment versus a heavy correlation uh, typically exhibited during large increases in realized volatility. Now, um, as previously stated, I'm a big fan of dispersion on the Dow components. Uh, it's 30 large well-known stocks, easy to follow and create your own basket of uh, individual components to trade against the index. Um, so I, here I, I I'm, again I'm I'm going to show you both the uh, the trade as a, a long dispersion trade uh, where you're short Volga i.e. vol of all volatility. Um, the correlation trading involves movement of vol of all so Volga uh, they need to move together for the uh, trade to work depending on how you put the trade on. Uh, I'd like to use uh, a Vega weighted. Uh, this means the uh, the Vega is equal to the sum of the uh, single stock Vega. Uh, if both the index and single stock Vega rise on uh, the legs of the trade, uh, they offset each other, so you have no loss, no gain. Um, however, um, when I'm put put these uh, two trades on, I didn't actually get the uh, Vega to zero, so uh, the Vega here is actually a negative uh, 0 0.527. So I used uh, the uh, following tickers. So I used uh, Apple. You buy two contracts. Uh, you're going to, in this case, uh, if you're going to be uh, short dispersion, you're going to be long gamma on the index, and you're going to be long theta on the basket. So in this case, we're going to be actually uh, writing a call. Um, so we're going to be short at Apple taking in uh, income on those two contracts. The same with Microsoft shorting a, a, a call, writing it, taking in the income, two contracts. Same thing on McDonald's, uh, ticker MCD, writing a call, taking in, in the income on two contracts. Uh, United Health, same thing, and uh, Boeing, same thing. And in this particular case, you're going to be long the uh, Dow index through DIA, which is the uh, ticker. And so you're going to hold about uh, seven contracts. Uh, we'll give you the uh, uh, give you the uh, the Vega that I, that that I currently have, which is uh, minus 0 0.527. And so again, your short dispersion, uh, your long gamma on the index, and your long theta on the basket of individual components. And so what typically would happen is that, uh, and I grabbed these prices as of uh, today. So uh, if the uh, market were to move down, uh, let's say hypothetically uh, five percent. Um, you would actually gain about $927 on these trades. So your uh, initial posting of uh, collateral um, would be about, uh, I want to say about $18,000 um, to get the, uh, to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, to take in. You'd take in about $18,000 of premium on the uh, uh, individual components of the Dow that you sold short. And then you would uh, pay about uh, Twenty-four thousand uh, dollars to uh, to own the Dow, uh, the the DIA long position. Um, so if the uh, like I said, if the uh, index fell uh, or the overall market just fell five percent, and just each of the components fell five percent, even though that you know typically doesn't happen because they're not uh, a one-to-one -one beta with the uh, with the Dow. But if that were to happen, you would you would gain uh, about nine hundred twenty-seven dollars uh, on the uh, on the trade, and you'd be up about. Uh, You'd have a loss on the uh, on the Dow of about 27 percent. You'd have a gain on the um, on Apple uh, uh, short call about 33 percent. A gain on Microsoft short call of about 39 percent. A gain on McDonald's short call of about 57 percent. Uh, a gain on United Health uh, short call of about 51 percent. And a gain on the uh, Boeing uh, call of about 33.24 percent. Now, if the opposite happened and you were short dispersion and the market actually rallied higher, uh, the Dow component that you actually purchased and were holding long, uh, you would be up uh, on that particular position about eight thousand um, dollars. The Apple short and Microsoft shorts and uh, McDonald shorts and United Health shorts and Boeing shorts, uh, you'd be taking losses of about uh, uh, sixteen hundred on the uh, Apple, uh, a little bit under a thousand on the Microsoft, a little bit under a thousand on on uh, McDonald's. Uh, 
$300.60 on the uh, United Health and about a $1,500 $1, loss on the uh, Boeing. So your overall return, um, because again, the uh, the Dow moved up, would be about 3572 So you'd still offset that. Um, so in each of the cases where you're actually short dispersion, again, long gamma, long theta, um, you make money whether the market moves up or whether the market moves down in this particular uh, dispersion trading. And this is due to the fact that you're anticipating that realized volatility is going to rise. Because uh, again, it's a trade that's heavily based on correlations and then uh, uh, VOGA and the the, uh, the directional change in volatility. Um, so again, if you're deciding that you want to uh, be a long dispersion because you're assuming that central bank stimulus is going to uh, provide uh, a, a catalyst in terms of lowering uh, realized volatility and you have the same factors that have been taking place over the course of the last uh, you know 10 months um, you would uh, you would go long dispersion and again your short gamma in this case on the index and your short theta on the individual components that you choose to put in your basket um, in this case and it's the same securities um, same positions uh, you're just reversing it and uh, instead of uh, you're now short the uh, the index uh, and you're long the calls on those individual equities so uh, if the market moved up five percent um, you would end up being down about three thousand five seventy two because again your short call on the uh, on the overall index um, if the uh, market went down um, five percent you would still uh, come up with about a, a, a nine hundred twenty seven dollar loss um, but you would uh, you'd be very profitable on the uh, on the short call that you had for for the Dow but the individual components that you held long that you paid premium for uh, would all be down um, and so if you uh, if you go to stock tweets and if you go to uh, um, you review the uh, the information that I just posted um, you'll see those trades and you'll uh, you'll be able to kind of look through them and, and hopefully it's uh, easy to understand uh, I may post uh, additional trades um, this is going to be a trade that's probably good for uh, for the foreseeable future um, I would probably be in the first camp uh, and I'd want to uh, I want to I'd, I'd want a short dispersion in, in anticipation that realized volatility is going to continue to keep rising um, as of now uh, implied set uh, 15 and uh, realized is slowly moving past 12 and so we should probably see that diverge at some point in the near future where realized volatility actually is a little bit higher than implied which means that there's going to be probably uh, much more dispersion and uh, correlations are likely to move closer to one as, as there's going to be a, a gigantic sell-off in the uh, near near future uh, but stay tuned and uh, thanks for listening.